Let's take a look at the Lux Hub, probably the best Minecraft lobby plugin out there. It allows you to add a scoreboard, it manages your tab list, it adds a server selector so you can teleport to another world if you're using multiverse and to another server if you're running on bungee cords. It adds a player show and hide item, a server book with information that's completely customizable just like the item itself, it gives a welcome message and title as soon as you join the server, it allows you to use double jumps, it also allows you to create launch pads just like that, and you can even add holograms with the Lux Hub. This plugin got literally everything you need for your Minecraft lobby and today I'm gonna show you how to install it and how to set it up on your Minecraft server. Anyways before we start it would really mean a ton if you could leave a like on this video, also check if you're subscribed to the channel. Most people who do watch my videos are actually not subscribed even though it just takes a single click, two clicks if you also want to enable notifications and with those two clicks you would help me out for a lifetime. And then with it any further ado let's uh, dive right into this. If you're running a Minecraft lobby either on bungee cords or inside of a multiverse core server then you want this plugin installed on your lobby. It is amazing. It has pretty much everything you would want inside of a lobby. It is the only plugin you need and it's amazing. So by typing slash dhub you will get all the commands that are there. Now most of the things from this plugin will actually need to be changed inside of the config file. There are only a few things you can actually do in game. So first of all it adds a vanish command. So if you're the owner and you're inside of the lobby then you can do slash vanish to vanish yourself. It will also add a slash fly command. So by doing slash fly you will be able to fly. And then the first very important command is slash set lobby. So what slash set lobby does is if let's say I would set my lobby here set lobby just like that. You have successfully set the lobby spawn point. So right now if I walk away if I walk to just a random place and then I lock off the server then I lock back on on the server then I will spawn on this exact block, the place where I did slash set lobby. So this will from now on be your spawn point. Doesn't matter where players go in the world, they will always respawn here. Now this will of course also give you access to the slash lobby command, so if I just type slash lobby now, then I will teleport also to this spawn point. It also allows you to change game mode easily, so instead of game mode creative or game mode survival, you can just type GMC, GMS, GMA, GMSP, and that will take you to creative survival adventure or spec. You will also be able to do slash clear chat, so just clear chat and then the chat has been cleared. Very handy if people are spamming inside of your lobby. And then we have the lock chat, so if people are just fighting with each other or whatsoever then you can do slash lock chat and it will actually lock chat. People won't be able to chat anymore. Very very handy. Now over here on top you will be able to toggle the scoreboard but you can't actually change the scoreboard from in game. You will actually need to do that in the config file and I will go over that in a minute. Now the Lux Hub open menu you can actually open a menu here. Now what is a custom menu? Well that is basically this server selector. So if I right click the server selector it will open this menu. This is a custom menu. You can completely customize what is inside of this menu. So you can edit the background. You can edit exactly what this says. You can you can change the item. You can change the name. You can change the description. And you can also change where it takes you. So right now this would take me to my faction server. If I did have a faction server. I don't so it won't take me anywhere. But because I don't have a faction server I can change this to something else. I can change the position what it's in. It's just completely customizable. So with this command the Lux Hub open menu I I will be able to open that server selector without actually right clicking on the server selector. And then here we got the Lux Hub hologram which is probably the most important command in game. So if you want to create a hologram, very easy, just go and stand here, do slash dhub hologram uh, create, then we're gonna give it a name so I'm gonna call it test1 and enter. There we go, we've now created a hologram. Now if you want to edit this hologram, very easy, slash dhub hologram, and then you can immediately see every single hologram command. Now in this case we want to change the first line, so we're just gonna do hologram set line, and then the ID, the ID in this case is test1, and the line is 1, because it, we want to edit the first line, and then we're gonna edit it to subscribe uh, to Kasai Sura. There we go, beautiful. Now that's pretty much everything that you will be able to do in game. For the rest you will need to change everything inside of the config file. So 
let me take you through that. So first, make sure to go to the folder where your server lives. So the place where you made your server, go there. If you're running your micro server at a micro server hosting company, you will need to go to the FTP files and then you will see pretty much the same thing. So what you will want to do is go to the plugins folder, which is the place where you dragged in the Lux Hub in the first place. And then we want to go to the Deluxe Hub folder and then to the config file. Now here inside of the config file, you can change pretty much everything. So first we just have some default information here that we don't really need to care too much about. The only thing that matters a little bit are the actions. So we got message, broadcast, title, action bar, sound, command, console, game mode, bungee, effect, menu and close. Now what exactly these things are and what they're good for, you will see that in a second. Now after that we got the general settings and this might be the most important settings if you're running Deluxe Hub on a multiverse core server. So you can pretty much run this Minecraft plugin on two different types of servers, a bungee cord server or a multiverse core server. Now with a bungee cord server, you would have a dedicated server that only runs your lobby. In that case, you can just install this plugin on only that server and then of course it will also just work on only that server. Though if you're running a multiverse core server, that means that all your game modes and all your worlds are all in one server. Also your lobby world. So if you install the Lux Hub, then by default, the Lux Hub will be enabled in every single world. So we want to design Disable the Lux Hub in every single world except for your lobby world. Now to do that you will have to change some settings here. I would recommend first changing invert to true. By doing that you will make it so that every single world inside of this list is actually a world where the Lux Hub will be enabled. So basically by changing this to true you will disable the Lux Hub in every single world except for the worlds inside of this list. Now I'm just gonna change this to the world called world which is just my normal overworld. So now the Lux Hub will be disabled in all worlds except for this one. Then we got the anti-world downloader. Do you want anti-world downloader enabled? Of course you do. Do you want people to download your lobby? No, just leave this as default. Now next in the config is the scoreboard. Do you want scoreboard to be enabled? True, of course. Then we got the display delay. So how many seconds after you join the server or how many seconds after you change worlds will the scoreboard actually appear? This one is on three seconds, this one is on two seconds, just leave it as default. Then refresh, when should the scoreboard actually refresh? It now refreshes every 20 seconds, which is fine, but you can change it if you want, of course. And then down here, what does the scoreboard actually say? So it now gives you the player name and the vault rank. Now, because I don't have vault installed, it will actually not display anything here. So I'm just gonna remove it, just like that. And I'm gonna remove this, and I'm also gonna remove this part. So now it will just say, Kasasura, because here we have the percent player percent. And then I'm actually gonna copy this and I'm gonna change this here to subscribe to Kasasura. Yes, that's useful information we want on the right of our screen at any time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also the title. You can change the title here. So it's now Deluxe Hop. We can change it to Epic uh, Test Server. And the online players, I don't want it there. So if you can remove it. Then we got the tab list. Should Deluxe Hop manage your tab list? That's set to true. Now, how often should it refresh? I'm just going to leave it at 400. You can change it if you want. And then we got the header and the footer. So the header will be everything above the player names. And the footer will be everything beneath the player names. So I'm just going to change this here to epic test server and then i'm gonna remove the website because i just don't want it there just like that and then we're gonna change this to subscribe uh, to uh, kasai sorat <laughs> So much advertising inside of my server. Okay, after that, auto broadcast. So these are announcement messages that will be sent every so often inside of chat. Now, do you want it enabled? Yes. What is the delay? So how much time between each announcement? It is now on 60, so every 60 seconds, one of the announcements will be sent. How many players should be online before an announcement will get sent? Well, it's now just sent to one. So if one player is online, an announcement will get sent. If nobody is online, then the server will also just not send announcements, which is pretty handy, I guess. Then we got sound options here so value block note block bling that is a sound apparently and this is a sound that the announcement will actually make when it pops up in chat you can change this value to whatever sound value you want and then down here we actually have the announcements we have test one two and three and you can change these messages to whatever you want furthermore down we have the launch pad should it be enabled yes what is the power level now in this case the launch power is three and the launch power y is one you can of course fully customize this though i think the default is fine and then over 
over here you got the blocks that actually create a launch pad. So you have a top block and a bottom block. So if we stack these two blocks on top of each other, it will create a launch pad. By default it is a redstone block and a stone pressure plate. But I can see that maybe you've made a lobby where these blocks don't really fit in and you want to change them, then you can do that here. Also here we have one of the actions. The action is sound and it is entity bed takeoff, meaning that you will hear the entity bed takeoff sound as soon as you activate the launch pad. After that, double jump. Do you want double jump enabled? What is the power level and the power Y level? Once again, fully customizable. Then a cooldown. In this case, it is three seconds. So every three seconds, people can double jump. And then once again, a sound that you can completely customize. So over here, we actually have a page with every single sound value. So these are all sounds and you can all use them. So block amethyst, block place. This is basically the sound that you hear when you place an amethyst block. I could use this sound when I double jump for example. Now every single sound here is usable. Minecraft has a lot of sounds. So if you want to change your sounds in the Lux Hub to something else, then I will leave this page linked in the description of this video so you can check out all the values for yourself and see if you can find the one that you want. Then chat management. Do you want a command blocker to be enabled? Yes. And what commands should actually be blocked? If you want another command like slash kill, for example, to be disabled, then you can just put it down here. Then we got anti square. Should anti-square feature be enabled? True. And then a list of bad words. So all the bad words you know and you don't want people to say on your server, just put them in here. Then we got the world event setting. This is an amazing feature of this plugin. So disable hunger loss, disable fall damage, disable player PvP, disable void death, disable fire damage. It will basically make your players invincible. It just makes sure your players don't kill themselves inside of your lobby. It is great, just leave it all enabled, except if you're actually running against a problem where one of them needs to be on false then of course you can change it. But for the rest, for a lobby, I would say these are all fine. Then, player join event. Should the Lux Hub handle the join and quit messages? If you want that, just leave it on true. And then you can specifically say what the join and quit messages should say down here. So they're fully customizable. Then a little bit further down, we got the join events. So this is everything that will happen as soon as you join. You can see tons of messages here. After that, a title, a sound, a game mode, and an effect. Okay, so Zora, what are all these things? Well, those are the actions you see here on the top of the config. So we got the message, sends a message to the player. Then we got title, sends a player a title message. Then we got sound, send the player a sound. Then we got effect, give a potion effect. So you can use all of these however you want. And this is the default configuration. So you will just have tons of messages that will be sent in chat. After that, it will display a title. The title is saying, welcome player. So the player is me, Kasasura, the one who joins the server. Server. So we can change it to subscribe and then we can change the player to Kasai Sora. So now we'll say subscribe to Kasai Sora. Then once again sound entity player level up. So we'll play a level up sound as soon as you join the server. You can change it to whatever sound value you want. Of course link in the description of this video. Then game mode. What game mode do you want players to join in? I would say it's a lobby so adventure should be fine. And then effect speed 1. We can change it to speed 2 if we want because why not then also some other join settings so should we teleport the player to the spawn point so that's basically the slash lobby thing i did do you want players to spawn on the block where i did slash set lobby if you want that just leave it on true should we heal the player should we clear the inventory that's an important one so let's say somehow a player is able to obtain an item inside of your lobby then you probably don't want that. If you have items in your lobby though, and you want players to be able to actually keep them, you have to leave this on false. But if you don't want players to obtain any items inside of your lobby, except for the custom items that you give them, then just change this to true. Then a firework on join. So as soon as the player joins, shoot over your firework, yes or no, and you can change exactly what the firework does here. Then we got the custom join items. So these are items that will be inside of your whole bar in a fixed spot, so you can move them, and you can pretty much let these items do whatever you want. So the item this plugin generates by default is the information book and the information book will basically just send text in chat. Now like you saw here there are many different actions and you can use every single action there. So you can let it open the menu, you can let it change your game mode, whatever you want. Now in this case it's an information book so I'm gonna leave it here. And then after the information book we have the server selector. That's a pretty interesting one because the server selector actually has an action called menu. Menu server selector. So it will open 
open a menu. The menu it will open is the server selector menu. But Casasara, where can I see that server selector menu? Well, for that you will have to go to the menus folder and then to the menu you want. In this case, the server selector menu. Server selector.yml. Upon opening it, you can change your menu here. So how many slots should the menu have? 27 is, I think, equal to a small chest. If you want to make the menu as big as a double chest, then you can change that here. Then you got the title of the menu is server selector. And now it's much better. <laughs> there we go. Then the refresh rate. How many times should you refresh? And after that, the items. So these are the items that will be inside of the menu. So first of all, we have the filler. This will be on every single place where there's no item, basically. So the material is the gray stained glass pane. We can change this to, for example, blue stained glass pane. Why not? And then here we have the factions item and the survival item. So the factions item is shown as a TNT. The slot it is in is slot 11. The amount is 1. It glows and the name is factions. This will be in the lore. And basically what it will do is it will close the menu because the action is closed. Then it will send a message in chat and that's saying sending you to factions. And after that it has an action bungee factions. Now very important if you're running a multiverse server then pay attention Bungie Factions is basically sending you to the Faction server. So if you're running a Bungie Guard proxy and you're running a server called Factions inside of your proxy, then this will send you to that server. If your Faction server has another name, that you will need to change that here. So just put the name here that you gave your server inside of the Bungie Court proxy config. Now if you're not running Bungie Court and you're running Multiverse, then this is the command you want to use. So just gonna paste it here, there we go. Console, MVTP, player name and then the world name. So instead of sending you to another server, it will send you to another world. Now we can change this to world nether, for example. And now it will take me to the nether world. So as soon as I click on the faction symbol, it will take me to the nether. We're gonna test that out in a second. Now the last thing here inside of the config.yml file is the player hider. So do you want the player hider enabled? Yes. Do you want a cooldown? What slot should it be in? And then you got the materials. So the not hidden material is lime dye and the hidden material is gray dye. So you will see lime dye in your inventory when all players are just shown for you. And as soon as you click it, it will change to gray dye and then the players will be hidden. If you click again, it will change to lime dye again and you will see all players again. That's basically it. Okay, so we have just changed lots of stuff inside the config file. Let's rejoin the server and see if everything works. So let's just join. Wow, there we go. Subscribe to Casasura, exactly how we changed it. Now we didn't change the welcome message in chat, so that's still all the same. The announcement you see over here, we also didn't change it, so it's all still default. But you now exactly know where to change it, if you want to. Then the scoreboard on the right does say Epic Test Server, Casasura. Subscribe to Casasura, just like we made it so. And the Casasura will actually change depending on your Minecraft username. So if you join the server, then that will say another username there. And in the tab list, we got Epic Test server Casasura and then subscribe to Casasura just like we made it so and then we also got the server selector so let's open the server selector and you will see that this has all been replaced with blue stained glass pane and then if we click here on factions remember we made it so that it takes us to the nether world so let's click and it will load a bit there we go I'm now inside of the nether now what you will also see is that the lux hop is not enabled here we won't have the tab list we won't have the scoreboard and I will just able to break blocks here I will be able to do everything because we're no longer inside the lobby we disabled the lux hop inside of every single world except for the normal overworld so this is not the lobby world we're just able to survival here now if we do lock off the server and then back on i will respawn here because this is the spawn point this is the lobby that we made also very cool if we go to if we go back to the nether just like this and then we do slash lobby then it will take you back to the lobby. It's as easy as that. It's a freaking amazing plugin. If you're running a lobby, doesn't matter if you're running it on a multiverse core server or on a bungee cord server, you want this plugin installed. It is freaking awesome. And then guys, that's gonna be it for now. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you learned something today. If you did, make sure to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, not subscribed yet, and you do enjoy the content, make sure to smash that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. You would really, really, really help me out by doing that. You actually would. If you have any more questions for me, then make sure to leave them in the comments of this video, and I will see if I can answer them for you. And then that's gonna be it for now, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.